Namaskar dear students this video will mainly focus on the NEET MDS exam preparation i will be covering the image based or the picture based multiple choice question so stay alert and stay tuned i will be covering removable partial denture that is rpd in this before going to the question, there are certain tips and tricks to solve these kind of question. The first is that always revise the topics with images. Now this will not only help you to solve the image based question, but the visuals, they make it a lot easier to grasp the content and we retain the information for a longer period. Second thing is that always follow the standard books. You know, these images are always taken from the standard books. So, if you have time, just go through all the pictures of the books. Third, very, very important, solve as many picture based questions as possible. This will make you the work very easier. So let's get started with 25 such MCQs from RPD. Now here is the question number one. The picture below shows which surveying tool. A. Analyzing rod. B. Undercut gaze. C. Graphite marker. D. Wax knife. The answer is C. Graphite marker. A graphite marker or a carbon marker is a parallel sided carbon rod which is used to mark the survey line on a crown on a cast. Now if you wish to revise the surveying tools, I have given the link in the description box. Question number two. If the tooth number 37 in the figure is considered as a part of removable partial denture, then this condition of partial edentulous state is classified as. We will consider the Kennedy's classification. The options are A class 1, B class 2, C class 1 mod 1 and D class 2 mod 2. Our answer will be D class 2 mod 2. As this is the most posterior edentulous space which is making it class 2 and the other two modification spaces, so it will be class 2 mod 2. Question number 3. The picture below shows which type of major connector? A. Palatal bar B. Palatal strap C. Palatal plate and D. U-shaped major connector so our answer is B, palatal strap. Palatal strap is a wide band of metal with a thin cross-sectional dimension. It has a minimum width of 8 mm and 1.5 mm in thickness. And if you see the cross-section, the thicker area is in the central area which increases its rigidity. Now its link also I have given in the description box. Question number 4. If the tooth number 18 in the given figure is a part of removable partial denture, then this condition of partial edentulous state is classified as. Our options are A, class 1, B, class 2, C, class 1, mod 1, and D, class 2, mod 1. It is again the application of Kennedy's classification. So our answer will be yes, D. Class 2 mod 1 as it is a unilateral posterior edentulous space with one modification space. So it will be class 2 mod 1. Question number 5. The picture below shows which type of major connector? A. Palatal bar. B. Palatal strap. C. Palatal plate. And D. U-shaped major connector. So our answer will be Yes, D, U-shaped major connector. It is also called as the horseshoe connector. It is the least rigid major connector amongst all the maxillary major connector and it gives very little cross art stabilization. It is mainly indicated in the Turai cases. Question number six, keeping in mind that all the teeth are healthy, how will you classify the edentulous space in the maxillary arch in the given figure? Options are A, class four, B, class three mod one, C, class three, and D, class three mod two. 
our answer will be yes c that is class 3 why class 3 why not class 4 because the edentulous space is not crossing the midline question number 7 the clasp shown in the figure is the options are a simple circlet b reverse circlet c back action and d embrasure clasps so our answer will be b that is reverse circlet reverse circlet is a circumferential clasp which involves the undercut adjacent to the edentulous area it is mainly given in Kennedy's class 1 and 2 cases. It mainly approaches from the mesial aspect of the distal abutment. Question number 8. You have found this RBD in the clinic. How do you describe it? A. Class 2 mod 2. B. Class 3 mod 2. C. Class 4 mod 3. And D. Class 1 mod 2. Yes, our answer will be B, class 3 mod 2. Now, this is the main edentulous area which is tooth bounded because clasp assemblies are present interior and posterior to it. And other than that, there are two modification spaces. So, it will be class 3 mod 2. Question number 9. The figure below shows which major connector? A, lingual bar, B, labial bar, C. Kennedy bar and D. Singulum bar. Yes, our answer is C. Kennedy bar. It is actually a lingual bar with a singulum bar. The upper bar is just like a singulum bar. The lower bar is just like the lingual bar and they are connected with the minor connectors. It is also called as double lingual bar or a split bar. And this is mainly used where there is wide interproximal spaces and we cannot use a lingual plate. Question number 10. The clasp assembly shown in the figure is indicated in A. Distal extension RPD B. Tilted tooth C. Periodontally compromised abutment D. Missing key abutment Yes, our answer will be C, periodontally compromised abutment. If we look at the picture carefully, it is a multiple circlet design. In this, the two reciprocal arms are joined at the terminal aspect. And it is mainly indicated when the principal abutment is periodontally compromised. It distributes the forces between the multiple abutment teeth. Question number 11. The figure below shows which type of major connector. A. Labial bar. B. Kennedy bar. C. Swing lock design. D. Lingual apron. Yes, our answer is C. Swing lock design. Swing lock design is a type of major connector which contains one lingual plate and a labial bar. The lingual plate, it provides the rigidity and the labial bar, it provides the extra retention and the stability. If we talk about Kennedy bar, we have already discussed that it is a double lingual bar. And lingual apron is the other name of lingual plate major connector. Question number 12. The picture below shows which surveying tool. A. Analyzing rod. B. Undercut gaze. C. Graphite marker or D. Wax knife. Yes, the answer is B. Undercut gaze. Undercut gaze is used to measure the horizontal depth of the undercut. It is mainly available in 0.01 inch, 0.02 inch and 0.03 inches. Question number 13. The figure below shows which major connector? A. Lingual bar. B. Labial bar. C. Double lingual bar or D. Single lumbar. Yes, the answer is C. Double lingual bar. It consists of a single lumbar and a lingual bar. It is called as double lingual bar or a Kennedy's bar as we have already discussed. The previous image was taken from Stewart and this image is taken from MacRacon. Both the images are very important for MCQ point of view. Question number 14. The clasp assembly below shows A. Reverse action B. 
fish hook, C, hairpin clasp or D, all of the above? Yes, the answer is D, that is all of the above. It is a reverse action clasp because in this, the retentive loop, it loops back to engage the undercut which is apical to the point of origin. And because of its design, it is called as fish hook or hairpin clasp. So the answer will be all, the, all of the above. Question number 15. The cast partial design shown in the figure is indicated in A. Mandibular tori B. Highly resorbed ridges C. Missing key abutment and D. All of the above. Yes, the answer is C, missing key abutment. If we look at the picture, it shows a swing lock denture design. It is mainly indicated when there are missing key abutment, that is if the premolar and the canines are missing, then the retention is obtained by engaging the lingual as well as the labial surfaces of the remaining anterior teeth. Question number 16. The clasp shown in the figure is a. Fish hook clasp, B. Ring clasp, C. Back action clasp, and D. Half and half clasp. Yes, the answer is D, that is half and half clasp. This is a very important image taken from MacRacon. You know in this, it is a type of circumferential clasp in which the retention arm, it arises from one direction and the reciprocal arm, it arises from another minor connector. That is why it is called as half and half clasp. Question number 17. The type of prosthesis you will plan for the figure below is A. Overdenture B. Obturator C. Only denture or D. Flange prosthesis. Yes, our answer will be B. Obturator. If we look at the picture, it is a maxillary defect. So, obturator is a prosthesis which is used to close an opening or the defect of the maxilla as a result of partial or total removal of the maxilla. Question number 18. The assembly shown in the figure is A. Intracoronal attachment B. Extracoronal attachment C. Intracoronal rest or D. Bar attachment Yes, the answer is B. Extracoronal attachment As we can see in the picture It is a Dalbo attachment This picture is taken from MacRacon In the Dalbo attachment It has a L-shaped male portion Which is attached to the abutment crown and it has a female sleeve which is placed in the artificial tooth adjacent to the abutment. Okay, and there is a coil spring which allows some vertical movement of the danger. Question number 19. The clasp shown on the tooth marked A in the figure is A. Fish hook clasp B. Ring clasp C. Ambrosia clasp and D. Half and half clasp Yes. The answer is B, that is the ring clasp. If we see carefully, it is a circumferential clasp which encircles nearly all the tooth from its point of origin. It is mainly indicated in tilted molars. Question number 20. The clasp shown on the tooth marked B in the figure is A. Fish hook clasp B. Ring clasp C. Back action clasp and D. Ambrosial clasp. Yes, the answer is D, that is the ambrosial clasp. We can see the two occlusal rests, two retentive arms, and two reciprocal arms joined in the ambrosial area. This clasp is also known as the Bonville clasp. Question number 21. The figure below shows which major connector? A. Labial bar, B. Kennedy bar. C. Swing lock design or D. Lingual apron? Yes, the answer is A, that is the labial bar. It is a type of major connector which is placed labial or buccal to the alveolar ridge and the teeth. It is mainly indicated in a lingual tori or in case of excessive lingually tilted teeth. Question number 22. 
the type of prosthesis shown in the figure below is a over denture b obturator c only denture and d flange prosthesis yes the answer is b obturator as we can see this is an obturator with the artificial palate with some teeth and a, a hollow bulb a closed bulb which extends into the defect area an obturator is a prosthesis usually given for maxillary defects question number 23 the type of prosthesis shown in the figure below is a surgical obturator b interim obturator c definitive obturator and d flange prosthesis the answer is c definitive prosthesis to solve this question you should know all the three types of obturators i have given the link above now how to recognize that it is a surgical interim or definitive obturator the surgical obturator you will see as a artificial palate with clear acrylic the interim obturator is made all of the acrylic and may or may not have teeth as we can see in the picture it consists of a metal base that means it is a definitive obturator with teeth question number 24 the figure below is a condition of hemimaxillectomy which class according to armani's classification it belongs to a class 1 b class 2 c class 3 and d class 4 yes the answer is a that is class 1 in this type of resection is performed along the midline of the maxilla and the teeth are maintained on one side of the arch if you don't remember the armani's classification please go to the link and revise it because it is very important for multiple choice question question number 25 the type of prosthesis shown in the figure below is a surgical obturator b interim obturator C definitive obturator and D flange prosthesis. Yes, the answer is D that is flange prosthesis. It is also called as the mandibular guiding flange prosthesis. It is given in the patients with hemimandibulectomy. It guides the mandible into occlusion. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. please like and comment that keeps me motivated subscribe the channel for more learning wish you success